This is another video I'm releasing in a series on how to make currency at League Start. Hi, it's Lerald, and in this video I'm going to talk about Alva, one of the community's favorite easy money makers who has gotten a massive quality of life buff in patch 3.24. But before I do, we are super close to 2,000 subscribers. We're very excited that we've hit that number so quickly, and we're just going to keep on going. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's talk about the strategy and what makes it special. Alva's League mechanic, Incursion, allows you to generate a ton of value very quickly for almost zero investment. In terms of what it creates, you make Vol Temples, which can be traded with other players and contain a huge collection of special rooms. You're really only trying to craft two specific rooms that are used for corrupting high-end gear in the hopes of getting valuable items. Is this a fun League mechanic? Uh, yes, I think so. In patch 3.24, they fixed what was basically the main problem with Alva. Prior to the patch, you always had to remember to select her master mission for every single map. And now you can just guarantee that she is in every map with Atlas passives. So yes, she is good and she is fun. Now let's just kind of cover the basic details. We'll go into a little bit more detail later, but here's the basics. In every map, Alva will have a bunch of incursions into a vault temple from the past. You jump through the time portal, and then you have a limited amount of time to kill the dudes inside and open up all the locked doors that you're able to. There are two unique mobs inside of each incursion room. Killing one of them will cause the other to despawn and, like, basically take over the room, and the room will change what it does based on which one is left behind. Once you've completed 12 rooms, you can take an itemized temple from Alva and trade it to other players. Now, how complex is this mechanic? There is some complexity with this mechanic in terms of figuring out how to consistently ensure that you get the right room so you're always making profit off of each set of 12 rooms, each, each temple that you make. But the gameplay loop is very simple. You kill guys in a room, you open doors, that's it. All right, now let's talk about sort of the cost and setup in doing this build. And between the time when I first started working on the video and now, GGG dropped a complete and totally unexpected reveal of all of the new scarabs before the launch of Necropolis League. Again, I really was not expecting this, but I'm pleasantly surprised. So now we know what the four incursion scarabs are, and let's just take a look at them. The basic one is pretty boring, it just makes Alva show up in the maps. This can maybe save you some passive points, but I do think generally speaking it's not really all that valuable. The second one is the invasion. Incursion Scarabs, they just add basically 12 to additional, uh, 12 to 16 additional packs of Incursion Monsters, which sounds like it adds Incursion Dudes directly into your maps, so maybe it's something you can use without specking into Incursion. Uh, kind of sounds like it's for map juicing more than for, like, doing Incursion. Kind of weird, almost seems, again, like a, a Scarab you would use if you're not doing Incursion. Maybe I'm misreading that, but I don't think so. The flavor text says, a gate once opened may swing in either direction. Sounds very much like it's not inside the incursions, it's inside your maps. Okay, the third option here is the Incursion Scarab of Champions. It makes it so that incursions have a 35% chance for all the monsters to at least be magic. That kind of synergizes with if we open up a PoE planner. I can't remember the name, but I know exactly where it is. This, uh, this bad boy right here. Time dilation gives all of the incursions in your map, a 33% chance for the monsters to be at least magic. So, right, 33% chance for all the monsters in an incursion to be magic. And then this one buffs it to 35% as well. So almost 70%, 68, 69% for all the monsters to be magic. Okay, fine, 15% increased pack size. I, you know, again, I don't really think it's all that valuable. This one does sound like it adds monsters directly into your incursions and would also be for juicing. Also, you'll note that there's a limit of two. I guess there's a limit of two on this as well. So you can add anywhere from like 24 to 32 packs into your maps. You can add 70% chance for all the monsters to be at least magic. So if two of these and time dilation, all of the incursion monsters will be magic or rare. That does actually sound kind of useful. Like maybe you would just add incursion as sort of a map juicing mechanic. I think there are better mechanics for adding packs of guys into your maps, adding more like just dudes to kill, but maybe I'm underestimating and just the fact that this exists means that like it's an option. So that kind of will hopefully keep other costs down or serve as like a cheap alternative if if it's not as good, but it's still OK. Cheap alternative at the bare minimum. 
And then the last one is the Incursion Scarab of Timelines, and this is the one that's like pretty interesting. You get a bonus completed temple upon uh, finishing the last incursion of a map, and the rooms stay the same, but the tiers all change. It also sounds like all the connections stay the same, so it probably wouldn't be very good early on in making a temple. This is kind of one that you would want to put in more toward the end of making a temple. This is the only one that really interacts with your incursions in the way that players like do it normally. It seems interesting. If it swaps all of the tiers, like if the random tiers are different from what they are uh, on the incursion or the temple that you've made currently, then this could be good if you have good rooms, but the tiers are bad. Or if you're like halfway through building a temple. If it swaps the tiers and you have a temple that is set up correctly, you have the good rooms at tier three, then this is worthless. It requires some testing, but it could be able to double your profits, but it also could maybe just be kind of bad. I think there's some complexity here. I think it's okay, but I would say just generally speaking, I'm not really all that thrilled with any of these scarabs for like consistently adding a lot of value into what you want out of incursions. Like this one is really for juicing. This one is for juicing. This one is just for saving some passive points. And this one is maybe good, maybe bad, needs a little testing, seems a bit janky and not like something you would just throw into every single map. You would specifically go, all right, let me look at the temple before I jump into the map, see if it's maybe going to be in a position where I would want to duplicate it with, with random tiers. And I don't know, I just don't really feel that great about any of these three. As for the other setup stuff, sextants and map device, that's all gone. And that's that's really great. Like this, this leak's looking pretty nice. In terms of profitability, it does create a little bit of bubblegum currency. The Vol Flesh Merchant in each of the incursions can occasionally throw some raw currency at you, but we're talking like a handful of chaos here, a couple of regret orbs there, nothing all too significant. Not really a lot of currency coming off of this dude. In terms of selling what this strategy makes, it's very easy. It's in high demand from basically the start of the league, first couple of days of the league, all the way through to the very end. And it really increases in price and like just in profitability because the cost is basically a map and your time. Uh, once you get even just a couple of weeks into the league, it will really start to rise in price a lot. Now, in terms of the time investment, the approach to this is to go fast. You know, speed is king, low level maps work fine. And so the time investment is relatively low. It can be higher if you're doing this at higher levels, but you don't have to. This strategy can be done in tier one white maps. It can also be bundled into a high tier mapping strategy. Incursions add a lot of magic and some rare monsters into a map, but most of the dudes in there aren't really all that challenging even in juiced maps. You know, they're just like, they're regular dudes. They're not, there's not really anything special about the monsters in an incursion. And that's pretty good. It's not like say, essence where you're making a bunch of very dangerous monsters to kill the incursion mobs pretty easy now let's take a look at all of the atlas nodes for alpha in patch 3.24 and just kind of walk through those a bit just in time is now a 20 percent chance to spawn alpha and then the two small passive nodes next to it are 10 percent each so that's 40 percent just off of a four point investment right you know you could get this asap first four maps you could come over here if you want it will massively increase the amount of Alvis that you get in your maps just off of this alone. And with other nodes, you're able to guarantee that she's in every map. Artifacts of the Vault is not something that is like mandatory. It makes it so that every map will have four incursions instead of three. And like, okay, because you're not being constrained by master missions, it means you have to run three maps instead of four to create a temple. There's maybe some justification for actually not bothering with this, but I think generally speaking, you know, it saves you a little bit of time, saves you a little bit of maps. Maps seem like they're probably going to be a bit more of a valuable currency in the coming league because of the removal of annoying things like sextants and so on. But since you can do this strategy in tier one white maps, this isn't like a mandatory node, but I don't know. I think it's kind of nice, right? It's very inexpensive quality of life. You're going to be coming over here and taking like incursion mission chance anyway, so for me, I would rather have Artifacts of the Vol than not have it. Vol Oligarchs is a one-pointer since you are coming here and taking the chance to have Alva in your maps. Incursions in your maps contain a Vol Flesh Merchant. This is like an annoying guy who will cast a uh, phase run and like run away from you, but if you kill him, he'll drop some currency. That could be Wisdom Scrolls, it could be Divine Orbs. I don't know that I've ever had it be Divine Orbs, but 
sometimes you'll get like some regret orbs or some chaos and for killing one dude i think that's okay not a mandatory point probably the least mandatory point in the whole the whole tree we have uh two really powerful nodes right here in the middle and these are really what make this whole strategy function like without them it's really really hard to actually consistently make useful temples but with these two they make it much easier so we'll get into the mechanics a little bit more later on, but basically resource reallocation and contested development are both absolutely, absolutely mandatory for this alpha strategy. Time dilation is not completely mandatory. It does make it so you have a pretty high chance, I mean 33% chance for all the monsters in an incursion to be at least magic. It used to be 100% a long time ago. That was kind of, that was really juicy, but even at 33%, it's still pretty good. You're basically going to have one incursion in every map at least that has all magic monsters so that one might actually throw like a little bit more currency at you and that's that's good it's also good just for like getting a bunch of rares early on if you're still doing chaos recipe which by the time that you're this deep into the tree you might not be but even if you just are like looking for rares off the ground of at the very beginning of gearing that's that's something more xp more reward from killing all those guys the bigger value here is that you get double time from all of the kills and incursions so if you don't have this node and your build is a little bit weaker, maybe league start, or you're like pushing a little higher than just like tier one maps, it might go a little slower without time dilation. And you might actually run up against like the timer. You might get kicked out due to time. Once I have time dilation, I've never had a build that was so weak that it could like still stay alive through doing the incursions and couldn't completely handle the timer. The timer gets so much easier, like on a faster build, you might have 90 seconds left over when you leave an incursion if you have time dilation, and that, that is really strong. And then the final node is three small points that give you increased chance to have alpha in your map. That's very, very good here. And then treasure hunt, which causes incursions to have cursed treasures. We don't know what this is. Cursed treasures can be claimed for valuable rewards, but doing so will lose time while in incursions. This synergizes nicely with the extra time that time dilation adds. We don't know if it's like, does it shave 10 seconds? Does it shave 50% of remaining time? Does it have some other kind of mechanic? We also don't know what a valuable reward is. Is it going to be like a rare item? Is it going to be a divine orb? Is it going to be a wisdom scroll? I would imagine that the rewards from Treasure Hunt are basically the same as the rewards from the Vol Flesh Merchants, where it's just like a little bit of random crap currency. Maybe it's something more useful. Maybe it's like some of the weirder, valuable items that can come from the temple itself. So I think that this could be useful, but we'll see. Ultimately, I think just like with the Vol Flesh Merchant, even if it is bad, it's still something I'm going to play around with because I want to take all the nodes that get Alva into my maps. And as we can see here, we have eight nodes that give 8%, one that gives uh, 20%, two that give 10% each, four, 64 plus 20 plus 20. That's 104% chance, and you also have a baseline 8% chance. So you can realistically give up like one of these nodes, maybe, maybe like this one right here. That would put you at 104% chance, which she can't appear twice in your maps, right? So... You would get like a 104% chance. I think that's better than getting 96% chance and maybe running the risk of her not showing up in a map. And I think that at, at this point, like if I'm sitting here, I'm probably going to take the Fall Oligarchs and Treasure Hunt just to try them out. And if they are worthless, if they do wind up being terrible, then, you know, maybe I drop them uh, and save myself like three points. But I think initially, at least, I'm going to play around with them just to see if they're any good. Also, before I leave this page here, I just want to add that the the investment cost of this strategy, you know, for taking every single one of these points, a lot of these points are just spent on travel and you have a lot of other valuable stuff in the area. You could do like Blight with Alva. You could do Einhar since you can do multiple masters at the same time. You could very easily pick up a bunch of Einhar nodes while you're in this area. You could do Ritual. Potentially, if you're a ritual enjoyer, I think ritual maybe is getting buffed in the coming league, like stealth buffed. We'll see. There's there's a lot of really good potential, really a lot of good pathing like synergy here. You can very easily bundle Alpha with other league mechanics. And, you know, this basically just lets Alpha be like the uh, free, I don't know, sprinkles on top of a really good other strategy. Just a bit of extra free money thrown in there for very little effort and investment. OK, now let's talk about difficulty scaling. Uh, no, there isn't any. You can do this in white maps. You can do it in like tier one maps. There's no real interaction with scaling. It has the same interaction that like regular mobs in a map do. So if you do this in 
tier one white maps, the mobs inside the incursions are going to be less rewarding than in tier 16 juiced maps. But the temple, the thing that you're making with this league mechanic is going to be the same. So in terms of what we want, there are a lot of different room types and incursions, and they all have three tiers. And what we want to do is we want to create good tier three rooms. Now, there are two specific types of rooms that we're trying to get to tier three. There's the Corruption Chamber, which at rank 3 is called the Locus of Corruption, and there's the Gym Cutter's Workshop, which at rank 3 is called Doriani's Institute. I'll walk over to Alva and take a look and see if she has a unstarted temple here. Okay, so we don't have any of those in here, so this is, like, fine. Ultimately, we would want to convert these rooms into the Corruption Chamber and Gym Cutter's Workshop and level them up. This is basically all that we care about when it comes to generating currency with Incursion. There is some other stuff that's useful in incursions, but like 90-95% of the profit from incursion comes from those two rooms, and it's about an 80-20 split in favor of the Locus of Corruption. There's only one other useful room, and that's the Shrine of Empowerment, which at its maximum rank becomes the Temple Nexus, and it will increase the level of all adjacent rooms by one, even if they aren't connected. So if somehow you had a bad time of it, like you have a Temple Nexus in the middle, and you had a bad time of it, you got a Gym Cutter's Workshop, but you only got it up to level 2, then that Temple Nexus here, and you know, if the Gym Cutter's Workshop was here, it would level it up to level 3, and so that would basically, that would save you. That would give you the level 3 room that you're looking for. Alright, so let's start with the basics first and expand out onto the more complex stuff about Incursion. As I said before, you get 12 Incursions into each Temple of Atzawadl until it's completed and itemized at Alva, and then you come over to her and there will be a button here down, like, down at the bottom to take the Temple from her as an item. So that's 12 attempts to kill bosses, change rooms around, and open up locked doors. I have some example temples here. This one and this one. Because we take all of the relevant Atlas passives, we get four incursions per map, so we only need to do three maps to make a complete temple. When you zone in and start moving around inside the temple, you have 10 seconds until the time portal closes. You can extend the timer by killing dudes, and with time dilation, you have a ton of time to get things done. Without time dilation, it can be a little tight if your build is kind of weak relative to the content that you're doing. When you look at the Alva map before zoning in, you will see which room you're entering and who the two architects for that room are. And if a room already has an architect, killing the non-resident architect is guaranteed to add one level to the existing room. And it has a 50% chance to add two levels. And that is because of this node right here, resource reallocation, and the small passive that you take along the way. If you kill the resident architect, you will swap to the different type of room and add all of the existing levels onto the new architect's room. So if you're in a level 1 room and you kill the other guy, you swap types, you'll switch to a level 2. If you're in a level 2 room and you swap types, then you'll switch to a level 3 immediately. These are visually represented by an up arrow, meaning you're going to upgrade the room, or a pair of sideways arrows like pointing past each other, indicating that you're swapping the room. If you're dealing with an empty room, then you're just going to have two sets of sideways arrows, and the maximum you can get out of that room is a new rank 1. If you're looking at a room and neither of the options are any good, I prefer to just upgrade it in the hopes of hitting level 3. Once a room is level 3, it can't show up again, it is locked. This is good because it means more chances to shuffle through other rooms in the hopes of getting a Locus of Corruption or a Doyani's Workshop. Now if we come back and look at this temple again, we can see there are a lot of disconnected rooms. Disconnected rooms are indicated by being grayed out, and connected rooms are indicated by being lit up and having a connection between them. At a bare minimum, you want the important rooms to be connected to the entrance through a, through a path of rooms that get there. You are guaranteed to get at least one key from every room that you clear out, unless it's already connected to every single adjacent room. It's important for me to mention that you can't carry keys out of the rooms, so it's very much a case of like, once you find them, it's use it or lose it, so as soon as you grab it, use it to connect to an adjacent room. Now sometimes you'll get more than one key in a temple incursion, and that's good. It's pretty simple, you just kill dudes, grab however many keys they drop, and then click doors around the area to unlock them. If you're in a disconnected room, you want to try to connect it back to the main group. If you're in a connected room, you want to try to connect it to any adjacent disconnected rooms. If neither of those really apply, I like to just build upwards. Most people don't really care if the apex, this one right here, the top room is connected or not, but I do. There is a boss in there and I feel kind of embarrassed to sell someone a temple without the apex being connected. I feel like they would be laughing at me. So I always try to connect the apex to the rest of the temple. Just a thing I like to do, not actually required. 
Okay, I'm going to walk and talk through this because I think the visual aid will help with a lot of the complex details and make them all kind of come into focus uh, pretty easily. And I'm running T16 maps because right now we still have to use Alva map missions and I have a ton of red map, red tier map missions and I don't have any of the other levels. But in patch 3.24, as long as you have Alva nodes in, it doesn't matter what map tier you're using, that she'll show up and you don't you don't have missions existing anymore at all. So this is like stuff you won't have to worry about at all. Um, as for the maps, right, just a regular map, not anything special about it. You can do this again, tier one white maps. That's fine. I'm doing it with with red maps because this character is pretty strong and, you know, I have red red map missions. So, all right, as you zone in, you can see there's a mission here to do the temporal incursions with Alva. So what I was I was planning to cut to me having kind of cleared the map out and jumping into the incursions, but I walked forward 10 feet and the incursions were there. So that's fine so we'll talk to alva and the first thing we'll do whenever we talk to alva whenever we see her in the map we'll have a stroke what's going on all right so the first thing we'll do whenever we see alva in a map is we'll walk up to her and control clicker and that'll automatically open up this window with all of her incursion layout and we'll get our first room here and it's a flame workshop it's not connected to anything the alternatives we can mouse over here to see what rooms it's going to turn into it could turn into the sparring room which we don't care about that's basically worthless to us or we can upgrade this room i'm going to just upgrade it so that i can hopefully get a tier three and go ahead and lock this down and like move on to other rooms and try and get better stuff elsewhere so what we do as you can see the timer in the top is immediately flying up as we kill dudes the named guy, the important guy, was indicated on the minimap, but I killed him so fast that he's gone now. And we have a lot of disconnected rooms adjacent to us. We did pick up this one key here, the Stone of Passage. So I'm just going to walk over and tap that door that takes us up. Generally speaking, if I've got a bunch of choices, I'd like to always build upward. And then I'm just going to clear everything out and just try and connect more rooms together if I can get any more keys. And if not, well, you know, that's OK. This is a Vol Flesh Merchant right here. As you can see, they're kind of stealthy boys. I think I got them, though, on the first shot. So this bar isn't quite full. I left one guy hanging around somewhere. Not sure where. So normally, if you're trying to be super efficient, you wouldn't waste the time going around and finding this last guy. But I want to. So that's that. All right, I got him. It was not a good use of time. That's fine. And then we have another incursion right next to her. Again, uh, just control click her and that'll open up the room there or open up the menu here. And then again, we have a choice of uh, the hatchery, which is useless or upgrading the jewelry forge, the jewelry jeweler's workshop, which is also useless. So uh, I'm just going to upgrade the jeweler's workshop in the hopes of the, it going to act or tier three. We see that the Omnitech forge only went to tier two. That's not the end of the world, but yeah, we're just going to shoot for tier three here. Just going to clear it out, hit tier three. We can see the guy is indicated on the map with the arrow pointing up, and that's we're going to kill him off. He's dead. And now we're just going to look around. I think that's the Vol Flesh Merchant floating around here. There he is. He's gone. OK, we got our first Stone of Passage. Now, maybe we can get a second one. I do think it's possible to get. Well, it's definitely possible to get two. I feel like I've gotten three in the past on rooms that were like completely walled off but I could be misremembering. So once again, I like to build upward whenever possible. So we're connected to the top there and that's it. You always want to check and just make sure that you're not trying to zone out with a stone of passage in your bag because that will not leave the incursion with you. OK, so I've cleared out to the other two uh, incursions in here. I found them and I've killed the map boss now. In, in the real deal, you know, not doing like a pre-league sort of test explanation. If this were during uh, during patch 3.24 and I were actually playing through this and I were doing like high level maps, I would clear out the whole map. I would take all the Eldritch Alters. I would I would take it like seriously and treat it for real. If I'm doing low level maps, then I'm probably not going to clear out the maps at all. I'm probably just going to go find the incursions and then leave. So. Let's just look at the next map here. And all right, this is perfect. We got the Shrine of Empowerment in the middle, which is able to turn into the uh, Temple Nexus. And that's the perfect place to get it. So we're going to go ahead and kill the right side boss here. And then it'll only go up to level one, but hopefully we can get another round of that same room and upgrade it to level three. But we're just going to start out at least by getting the Shrine of Empowerment leveled up, get a key as well, get a little bit of lag too. That's nice. 
A little bit of lag on a Sunday afternoon. So we have some options here for where we can connect to. We can go to Chasm or the Trap Workshop. I'm probably going to connect to Chasm and then just try and use another incursion to connect this section that's connecting to the apex of Etzwaddle to the like connected group. Because I have a lot of incursions left, I, I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to connect this to everything else. All right, we've killed everything in here. The bar is full, so we're going to zone out. And we'll zip on over to the other one. This is probably the biggest downside of doing incursion is this right here. You kind of have to sit here and wait if you are putting the Vol Flesh Merchant and I, I would assume the Cursed Treasure into your incursions. Then you're going to have to like sit there and wait for a couple of seconds every time you zone out. Okay, uh, getting attacked by some rares. No thanks. All right, so once again, we're control clicking her and we have the option of like a Legion room or a Torment room. Neither of those is good. I don't really care which one is which. I, I don't care. So my goal here is really just to connect this passageway to the Shrine of Empowerment and then just to kill, you know, one of the bosses. It does not matter which. I'll just go left. I feel like going left. So that's the direction I'm going and we'll kill the Legion boss since he's over here to the left. Not really a lot more to say about it other than that. Hopefully we can get at least one stone of passage and connect that up and to the right. You can see if we mouse over these here the in inside the the display, we can show like we can show which maps correspond to which doors. You can see whether they're locked or open, whether they're red or green. And uh, yeah, you know, it all lays out pretty intuitively. So we'll connect that to the top right and at the bare minimum we are getting into into the apex of that swaddle from the entrance so that is connected now all we have to do is connect either the research lab or the banquet hall to one of these other rooms and then we'll have everything except for the workshop connected so that was one map i'm going to go ahead and run through the others i will skip ahead to doing those incursions and just uh kind of talk about them as i get to them all right, I'm just going to clear this stuff out a little bit here. We got very lucky. All four of the Alvos missions are like right here at the entrance to this map. So uh, I was planning to skip ahead like a little bit, but that's fine. <laughs> this is ideal. OK, so this is another room that's really not all that valuable. We can either hit rank three on the Crucible of Flame or we can switch over to the Sacrificial Chamber and that'll be rank three. The Sacrifice Chamber at rank three is something that people can interact with uniques and like do some special upgrades on uniques. It's not super valuable. It's something that people will potentially go after, but it's like one of those ones where you're getting like 5% of the value out of out of temples as opposed to the corruption, the the locus of corruption where you're getting, you know, 85% of the value out of the temples. So I'll I'll change it over. I'll switch over to the left side one just like because, but it's not really all that important. OK, great. We killed that guy. We've locked it in as a fancy sacrifice chamber. And now we can. There we go. We can get some keys, two of them, in fact, and we'll just continue unlocking rooms. There's nothing that's disconnected that we can connect, but, you know, that's OK. We're not lighting up any new rooms. We're just making the connections between all of the existing rooms a little bit more convenient. And that's also useful. All right, let's check this next room. Our options are the engineering department or the architect of industry, the uh, the vault. Some people like a rank three vault. It'll have like maybe some chaos in it. I don't really think it's all that big of a deal. It's only useful if you're going to be running the the temple yourself anyways like if you're selling this off to somebody they're not going to care that that maybe they find like five chaos inside of it it's definitely only useful if you're self-running them and i don't really think it's useful even then even though i know a lot of people will mention it as being oh it's great it's five chaos who cares so i'm just gonna upgrade and hope that i get to rank three off of this one and lock this room down all right and we're almost done with this one too hopefully we can get a uh a key here and connect to the entrance that would be nice i don't know how many i how many guys i missed where are they all over here at this one door toward the entrance as we can mouse over and see that's the entrance all right great cool well that's that's connected and we can look and just double check and see did it turn into a rank three no nah, it didn't it's a rank two 
That's not the end of the world, though. Now we can check another room here and our options are chest full, of, chest full of maps, which actually can be useful if you're self farming these at the start of a league. A bunch of maps can be useful. Again, it's not going to increase the like sale value to other players, though, or the poisonous plants, which are totally worthless. So we're going to go with the maps. We're going to go top right. Kill this guy up here. God, I love chain. Getting like nine, ten chains on this skill, having it chain around corners and kill dudes. That's so nice. And I think we have like one more pack around here somewhere. Where's the key? Oh, I'm in a room that's connected to everything, so no keys. And this is a Vol Flesh Merchant running around being annoying. I think we got one mob around here. Okay. Oh, maybe more than one. Nope, just the one. Yeah, no, no value from that guy, probably. Yeah, as you can see here, like I think those three orbs of fusings were probably from the uh, probably from the Vol Flesh Merchant. We're rich now. OK, great. This is great. So Jim Cutter's workshop, we can swap over to a Jim Cutter's workshop in that royal meeting room there, and that'll be level two Jim Cutter's workshop. So if we're able to get it in the next set of four incursions, we would be able to upgrade it to level three. That would be really useful. So we are going to take that one. I am going the wrong way here. All right. Yeah, we want to go left and kill this boss here, this architect here, to swap types to the Jim Cutter's Workshop in the hope that we can turn that over to a uh, to a rank three workshop in the next map. All right, that was pretty quick. And it's now a level two Jim Cutter's Workshop, a, term, a department of thaumaturgy, and not really useful at level two at all. Uh, I don't care about killing the boss in this one since we're just doing this for the demonstration. We'll just jump into another map with Alva and go right from there. Uh huh. Well, we have three Alvas all right next to each other. Atoll is definitely a very good map for Alva. Not the only map that's good for Alva, but there's a decent chance because of the way this map is laid out that you get three or four Alvas all sitting here in the front area waiting for you, and that's pretty good. Okay, this one's kind of a bummer, kind of worthless. I'm going to probably take the explosive charge just because you can use it to connect to other rooms that you're maybe not connected to. And since we still haven't gotten the Splinter Research Lab, these guys connected, uh, hooked up, we're going to go ahead and go right there. Even though we're going to get a key out of this this incursion for sure. It's just kind of nice to have some explosives just for like quickly navigating through if you decide to self farm a temple, like self run your your farmed temples, which we're kind of staring down the barrel of a temple that might not actually be any good. It's a possibility. So, you know, if I were to say like, all right, I'll cut my losses and run this temple myself, maybe I'll at least get some maps out of it, then it would be nice to have that explosive just to make cutting through rooms a little bit faster. And I did get a key, and so I'm going to use it on that one locked door there here into the Splinter Research Lab, and now we at least have that opened up. All right, let's jump over to this next incursion. Our options are to upgrade the Doriani's Institute or to change it to something else. Well, we really, really want that Doriani's Institute. Nice, a fortunate card. So we're going to make a beeline right over here to the right side and kill this boss. And excellent. We have at very minimum, at the bare minimum, made like in the current state of the league, a divine out of this temple. And I'm, you know, I'm talking through it all. Definitely being a little slower, but even like the worst case scenario here, we've made a divine out of this at least. And because this is a temple that's or this is a temple room that's connected to everything and we killed the, the architect that we cared about, we don't have to clear it out. Like a lot of people, if they're really trying to race through this, they will just as soon as they've got the architect they need and the, the rooms connected that they care about, they'll just bolt. And I probably should do that, too, but whatever. Kill that last pack of dudes off. See how many orbs of transmutation we can get from the from the fall flesh merchant. Eight, apparently. OK. Here we have a corruption chamber. Now, unfortunately, this one is on a level one map and we only have two incursions left. So we know that we by swapping over to that, we wouldn't be able to get a corruption chamber here. So 
we can run it or we can just do the office of cartography and i mean since a level two corruption chamber is totally worthless and we know we can't get it to level three in this map i'm just gonna go with the maps because at least if i were to self-run this i could maybe get like some useful maps ultimately it's kind of a no-win situation either way so we're just gonna go this direction I, I know, I know I'll explain a bit more in, in a bit. I think in doing the more optimized version of this, you would want to switch over to the Corruption Chamber and do a little bit of fishing, but we'll talk about that more after I finish this up. Okay, so this room's connected to everything and we killed the guy we needed, so we're done here and now I just need to find the final incursion. Okay, I'm at the final incursion here and my options are either to upgrade this to like a cache of items, which that's just random crap, or to a maybe better, the uh, maybe better version of a Legion monolith. So I'll do the Legion monolith just for the sake of it. It's dead. And then we will just kill a couple more packs of dudes to see if we can get a key, make our connections in this temple a little bit better, but really not necessary. We could just zone out at this point. But since I got a couple of keys from those guys, I might as well use them to unlock some doors and, you know, Kill off some dudes. Maybe we get a little bit of bubblegum currency. Probably not worth the time spent killing them, though. Okay, and we are done. We have created a temple. Now we're going to go talk to Alva in our map and get that temple as an itemized thing. A temple chronicle. Take the temple chronicle. It now drops into your, your inventory and you can sell it to other players. Okay, so that was the simple version. It is doing the mechanic the way that Grinding Gear wants you to do it. And you can just do this. Alva will be profitable just doing it the way that I just have. But there are a couple of adjustments you can make that will really increase your ability to consistently create temples that have the Locus of Corruption and Doriani's Institute in them, or both. And that'll make you a lot more divines per hour, so let me go over those details now. I made a mistake in that last section on purpose to now be able to talk about it. When you enter a map, Alpha pre-selects all of the rooms for the incursions that are in that map. She can only choose each room in the temple once per map. That means you can't get the same room two times in one map, obviously. Additionally, when you talk to Alva and look at the incursion that she's offering, that gets locked in permanently. Like, I'll even jump into another map just to kind of show that off. And I'm going to cut forward here to demonstrate. All right, I found Alva here in a new map. And I'm just going to talk to her and now, OK, she is locked in the first room here. It's a sparring room and I can either upgrade it or I can swap it over to an armor's workshop. OK, so if I walk over to another Alva and I talk to it there, it's the same thing. And if I were to leave this map and join another map, she would still have the same incursion available to me, no matter how many more maps I join. So what you want to do to game this is if you get a corruption chamber or a gym cutters workshop and you either like convert it over to level two or you run it at level one and it doesn't upgrade to level three, you don't want to run any more incursions in that map. You know that the room that you've just done cannot be in the map a second time. So any incursions that you do in the rest of that map will be wasted. So in the previous example, I had two incursions left and I had the chance to create a level two corruption chamber and instead I made the other building or upgraded the other direction. What I should have done there was make that corruption chamber, then not run the final incursion in the map. And then instead, when I ran into an alpha mission in the next map, I would have a chance at upgrading that level two corruption chamber up to a level three locus of corruption. And that would allow me to turn this one divine temple into a temple that's worth about six divines or so. You also don't want to talk to her at any of the other incursions in the map. You can talk to her at the incursion you just finished to like check and see if it upgraded to level three or level two or whatever. But if you talk to her anywhere else, that will lock in the incursion just like I just showed off here. So ignore her or you will lock in a new worthless incursion and then carry it into your next map. OK, now let's talk about selling temples. And I'm really glad that I have done this a little bit like as some kind of practice beforehand and, and just like have it have a nice little base of them built up to sell. I only did three temples and I made two that were somewhat valuable and one that was very valuable. So this is a pretty consistent strategy when you do it right. I highly recommend using Awakened PoE Trade. It really helps with pricing the temples. But if you don't want to, I will show off both how to price and sell temples with PoE Trade and using the trade site directly. So I have my default key bind here. I press that as Awaken PO using Awaken PoE Trade and it shows up this overlay here and it selects all of the somewhat valuable rooms. And the only things that we really care about are Doriani's Institute. And I guess the Apex being connected, but it's really not even all that valuable. So this is what it'll look like. I would say that this one is worth, you know, some of these ones that were listed over a month ago, 
27 days ago, those probably like aren't selling, obviously. So I would expect that the value on this would be somewhere in the 1 to 1.2 divine range is what I would be able to realistically sell this temple because it has a Doriani's Institute. Now we can just open up the trade site as well. And the way that you would search for this on the trade site, you would just open up the show filters and you would type in the name of the room. So Doriani, Doriani's Institute, and then you would want to set this to open room. It's important that the room is open. If the room is closed, you can't get into it. And then people are not going to buy a closed room temple because uh, you can't use the room. So this is literally all we would do in the trade site is we would just pull up a Doriani's Institute temple with an open Doriani's temple and we would just look at the price on them and look at the time when they were last posted and price it competitively. We can do the same thing with Locus of Corruption. And uh, it's really important, as you can see, it's really important to make sure it is set to open room. Again, the same strategy approaches. So this is anywhere from like five to six divines. I do think it's a little easier to see uh, to see that using like Awaken PoE trade here, where it does select some things that maybe aren't valuable. Like Wealth of the Vol is the tier three currency room. I don't care about that. Nobody buying a Locus of Corruption map is going to care about that either. But this would be anywhere from five to six divines, depending on how quickly you're wanting to sell it. Th that's really good. Getting a Locus of Corruption is the bulk of the value from running temples and selling them off. If you create a temple that has both a Doriani's Institute and a Locus of Corruption in it, it will be worth more but only slightly more than just a temple with a locus, like not really all that much. It's sort of like um, finding a free onion ring in your order of fries. It will definitely move faster if you just price it competitively. And that's kind of true for all of the temples. So how much you want to extract from them in terms of value is up to you. If you're willing to sit there maybe all day, not selling the thing, but get like 5% more value, that's okay. Depending on how competitively you price your temples, they may sell anywhere from pretty quickly to immediately. If you're getting spammed up like crazy, you may have posted too low, but there's kind of a fine line on that there. Temples are basically only used for these two very specific purposes, double corrupting armor pieces with the Locus of Corruption and double corrupting gems with Doriani's Institute. So the line on them can be extremely tight. Like just to give some examples from doing this at League Start in previous leagues, you might price a temple for 99 chaos and get hit with 100 messages per second. So then you go like, all right, I'm not going to undersell it. I'll price it at 105 chaos. And now it sits there all night without selling. Sometimes the line on them really is as, as simple as like two chaos could be the difference between zero traffic and infinite, infinite interest. Generally speaking, temples are something that increases in prices of league matures because creating them is a chore, as we've seen, that high level juicers don't want to do. But it's really easy, you can do it at literally any map tier, and it's pretty consistently profitable. I also think it is kind of a fun gameplay loop. You can also run your own temples for profit. Double corrupting gear with the Locus of Corruption is a complex, medium risk, high reward strategy, and that is definitely worth a video of its own. That video might be hours long. But double corrupting gems is a lot simpler. Basically, you just level up popular skill gems that have a vol version to level 20 with 20 quality, and... Then you run a temple that has a Doriani's Institute in it, use the Doriani's Institute to double corrupt that gem, and hope it turns into a level 21 Vol version. All right, now I'll show off how I would look at this. I would go to PoE Ninja, I would go to the Skill Gems tab, and I would check in the moment that you're doing this before, like, counting that one of these Skill Gems is still good and valuable and so on. But just to give some examples, like, I would, I would start out but just by typing Vol. And then I would kind of go from there. I would say like, okay, Vol Spark, Vol Summon Skeletons, Vol Detonate Dead, Vol Smite. I would then check the trade site on Vol Spark, Vol 21 Spark, 2120 Vol Spark. Let's see, is that valuable? Oh yeah, it's 60 divides, sorry, 69 divides. Very nice. So that is the kind of thing that I would try to level up to 20 with 20 quality or buy from other people as long as they're not corrupted. Buy 2020 gems, that also works. And then throw them into a Doriani's Institute, and you do that enough times, you will definitely come out ahead. It's possible to lose a little bit of currency doing that, like, initially, you know, it's not a gear. I mean, it literally is a gamble. It's not a huge gamble to corrupt gems, but it is still a gamble. So if you really just want consistent profits, you can sell your temples. For me, I think I probably will be doing this and double corrupting the gems, but as for the double corrupted armor, those are probably something I'll be selling off, at least initially. 
I do think that's there's like a profitable strategy there. But again, I think that's a much longer video, a much longer discussion on how to do that consistently. Kind of thing you could write like a master's thesis on, whereas this is like I see the numbers and they're they're pretty easy. And yeah, I, I do that. OK, do you need any kind of fancy stash tabs for this strategy? Not even in the slightest. No, you don't. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have fun hanging out in the past with Alva. Thanks for watching. Bye.